This one is a big one here, folks. This one is the Rivers of America. Oh. Tom Sawyer's Island demolition project hits a snag. State requests significant changes to permits. Lou, I, I, you, that exhaust right there. You're just relieved, right? You're relieved. No, I'm happen. just, I'm just. I, I was not yet on the show, just watching the show when the previous uh -huh. show uh, went uh -huh. into it. And everybody uh -huh. was, oh, gee, they're actually, they should take the win. And DeSantis is saving them. And come on, guys, look, the only reason this is a shock to anyone at Disney is that uh -huh. they were so used to the sweetheart deal with Reedy Creek that these Boom. kind of things never happened before. Never. Exactly. Uh, yeah. If you're talking water usage and animal preservation in Florida, uh, the, the guys on the other one we were showing you from above, Pro had uh, Google Earth up to show you how this river runs into this river, runs mm -hmm. into Bay Lake. I'm mm -hmm. sorry, gang, but if you spit in Florida, you're connected to the waterways. That's right. just the way Florida is. It's yeah. a swamp. <laughs> well, and as I you know, mention often on these shows, Walt Disney World property sits right in the path of the Everglades. Like that's yeah. where it sits. And those Everglades are so unbelievably important to the waterways that are in uh, central Florida, but also to the, the environment and surrounding areas. It is unbelievably important that these um, whatever changes that actually occur affecting the waterways on Walt Disney World property, great care be taken with them because they have such, and, a, such a profound And let's notice that that headline, itself. that headline is inaccurate. Mm. It says state requests significant changes to permits. There are mm. no permits. What they want is changes to the applications for the permits to Fair. cover things that people who do this all day long would have known to do. Yeah. The people yeah. who uh, handle that's, that's, that's who do developers in that state as a regular thing, they know what the score is. They know what the rules are. They know what the buzzwords are that should and shouldn't be in these applications. Obviously, Disney didn't. Once again, they hired their lawyers based on the cheapest price, not on knowing the, the lay of the land or the water. That's correct. That's correct. They definitely rushed into this. Walt Disney World has not yet received initial state approvals for its frontier on expansion project, which will include demolition of Rivers of America and Tom Sawyer's Island. Demolition is required to prepare the land for a car themed expansion and eventually a villain's land in Magic Kingdom. The state of Florida has sent Disney a six-page letter outlining dozens of faults in the initial application, which is related to water management actions that Disney has proposed to allow for an expansion of Frontierland. The state is asking Disney to make modifications to the permit within 90 days of the permit application being denied. Let's take a closer look at what this all means. Now, back in August 12th, Walt Disney World filed water management permits with the state of Florida, outlining the first steps that it would need to take to construct car, a cars themed area uh, out of Frontierland's expansion and a villain's land at Magic Kingdom. Permanent proposed an impact on wetlands of more than 300 acres, although much of the work would take place outside of Magic Kingdom boundaries as Disney created water management facilities in the area to allow for land preparation work within the world's busiest theme park. Apparently, in other words, of they're going blood. to create elsewhere what they're losing here, which is the standard yeah. practice in all these environmental things. Right. And I think there's like a series of pumps or something that will be yeah. um, constructed in various areas of uh, both the laydown yards and, and the areas affected. In essence, Disney wanted to construct three laydown yards to stage construction materials and equipment. And these laydown yards would be built on marginally unsuitable land near the rivers of America and the northwest section of Magic Kingdom along the tracks of the Walt Disney World Railroad. And for more on what that permit proposals looks like in the scope of the work, you can check out here. And we will. You can see at, on this photo right here, you can see the areas outlined in blue are where those lay down yards would actually take place. Uh, some of that is been cited as marginally, marginally unsuitable. So the area to just adjacent to, um, I would say, what the backstage facilities for both Tiana and Big Thunder, those were deemed marginally unsuitable. But the areas to the north and everything, those were going to be the areas either developed immediately or on an ongoing basis. And it appears that uh, because of the waterways that are impacted by this and so forth, as Pro, I'm sure, eloquently mentioned uh, in his show, well, the state has, uh, they have some qualms with the permitting application process. Uh, turning our attention back to this latest development, Walt Disney World received a request for additional information letter from the South Florida Water Management District on September 11th. 
The letter was delivered via email to the Walt Disney employee with employees at the Central Florida Tourism Oversight District and other companies copied. The six-page letter outlines 20 requests from the state, including seemingly significant change to the permit type from an individual environmental resource permit into a conceptual permit with broader construction implications and additional information about the work that Walt Disney World will be doing. Let me translate that. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. You asked us for the right to have an area to stage construction equipment, materials, etc., in order to demo what's there. We know that once you've demoed it, you're going to want to build something different where it used to be, which will take more of such areas, which you haven't told us about yet. So we are not happy that you just dealt with the here and now and not with the long term. Please do. Sincerely, your state government. <laughs> yes. Yes. Big uh, deal. Well, well, hang on except, now. Man. Except that sure. in bygone days when they were regulated by their own people. Yeah. That's all they would do would be tell you about the here and now, because right. everybody would kind of sort of know that once it got started, it was going to get a yes. Sure. This is actually doing Disney a favor, because if they lay out all the long term stuff now, they can't get stopped later halfway through and told, oh, wait a minute, we didn't know you were going to do this. That's fair. See point. what I mean? So, yeah. well, I'll I'll say this. Um, the environmental implications implications uh, uh, surrounding this permit application are very profound. Oh, sure. And it, like you said before, with the prior RCID or Reader Creek Improvement District structure in which Disney was basically, you know, the only one they had to actually answer to, you know, all this stuff would be kind of under the cover of darkness, so to speak. Right. Because that. This stuff has to be exposed in the way it does and has to be submitted publicly and, and and go through public proceedings. Well, now you have a situation in which, you know, there is additional scrutiny applied to everything that Disney does. Because and, the water guys have to yeah. answer to the public. Yeah. And if somebody That's comes true. along later and says you weren't tough enough on them to say what they were going to do in advance. And now you better stop the whole damn project until it gets sorted out. That would be bad for Disney. That would be bad for their status as a independent and honorable body protecting the public and the lands. And it would mm -hmm. be bad for the birds. Bad for the whales, you know. <laughs> <laughs> it would be, it's be bad for you, great. bad for me, bad for the whales. So yes, um, it's really a plus, not a minus. But as to whether it would somehow scuttle this whole stupid plan of tearing it all out, no way. No, no way. It's going to happen. I, you know. Yeah. I, I don't necessarily disagree with you. The plans do um, call for developmental hydrology and post-developmental hydrology, the effects on waterways and so forth, the effects on marshlands. Um, people will note that during the 1960s, interestingly enough, with the Mineral King project, that project was going to go forward. I believe Disney had acquired the land in that respect as well, but yep. um, unfortunately couldn't go through because environmentalists said, oh, wait a minute, you want to make a monorail or train to get there yeah that's not going to happen you're not going to get rid of all those uh you know historic trees and sites in mineral king for your project they eventually had to move away from it one of the tones that disney took regarding project x or the florida project or the walt disney world project that was different from mineral king was they kind of tried to get ahead of this right they tried to say hey look listen you know we understand the environmental concerns for buying up this much real estate in central florida tell you what we're going to set aside a set number of acreage as part of this plan as you know reserved areas right uh, stuff for You're talking just about environment at the inception itself. of disney world yeah the inception of Disney World. Yeah. back when environmentalism was obviously such a hugely political and intensive thing compared to now not well so, yeah yeah well and, or for that but, matter if you tried to build similarly mm -hmm. sized projects at the time of mineral king mm -hmm. in, in florida versus california they'd mm -hmm. be equally treated of course because there would be no political uh, fervor that was stronger in one area than the other about anything with the word environmental in it right uh huh. So, uh, <laughs> and yep. look at this. It says Disney has 90 days to respond before right. the application is automatically denied. Then mm -hmm. what would happen? Then everybody would come, hey, we killed it. They're not going to tear it down. Yes, they are. They're just going to file another application if sure. it took longer than 90 days. What that's they were used to in the Reedy Creek days was, yeah, all those 60, 90, 20, 30 days, big deal. Uh, we want what we exactly. want. We know you're going to give it to us eventually. We'll cover the, we'll, we'll work out all the details later. 
Well, right. now the state is saying, no, you won't. We got to have it up front, just like we do with every other developer in the state. Yeah. And, and, and Disney, Disney can be can be excused mm-hmm. for being ignorant of these details. Right. Well, their their lawyers shouldn't be, but mm-hmm. because they never had to deal with them before. This is a brave new world for them. Oh, yeah, exactly. The degree that it's yes. going through. I mean, it's like, what? We call the guys over there at Reedy Creek and we say, uh, you want to go on a cruise? Give us this. And they say, well, sure. <laughs> and What's the big deal? I'll, well, I'll, I'll say this. I'll say this. They have to now coordinate with the state in order to in order to um, schedule a time in which the state can actually review those, uh, not just the permanent applications themselves, but also the land that is at issue. I, I think they have to have uh, state representatives actually tour the land and, and those spots they want to have. Um, what is it? Uh, construction on, you know, any delays, you know, that obviously adds to the cost associated with them. Obviously, they have to hire people in order to, you know, fill out those uh, permanent applications again. So the, the dynamic here has changed. I think Lou, if, if there is a bigger story to be had here, I think the bigger story is the RCID, with it being no more, really changes the d- dynamic and what we've been saying for so long about the silver linings surrounding the RCID being done away with is that there is much more of a relation between the public and what they want and their interests and Walt Disney World. Previously, and Walt Disney World could just run ripshot over everybody, but right, now right. it's no longer the case. Well, uh, the the obvious comparison being uh, Disneyland Forward and those people next door. Yeah, they, right. they get heard there. Here, they didn't used to because there was no people right. next door except the ones in the six trailers or whatever it was. Yeah. So, so you know. Yeah. Um, but the other thing that's interesting to me, net net, in sure. this is if sure. it were possible to calculate the degree to which delaying this, having to spend more time and more legal fees on rewriting it and reapplying and whatever it goes into this. So pick a number for that. Pick any number in the world. A million dollars. Mm-hmm. Well, we've now got at least the first big, although I'm sure there have been some already, the first big visible million towards that one trillion dollars that fighting the quote unquote don't say gay bill is going to cost the Disney Corporation over the next 10 or 20 years. That's mm. all. This is part of that cost. This is part of yeah. what, what Pro and, and uh, Andrew and everybody else was talking about. Mm-hmm. When the whole Reedy Creek thing first started, mm-hmm. this is the kind of expense which other companies factor into such developments as an automatic necessity that this company's never had to deal with before. That's all. Absolutely. So it's, it's it's a short, sharp shock to them. But to anybody who's developed property in Florida in the last 10, 20, 30, 50 years, it's like a, yeah, so what? That's what you do. They didn't know that. So it it is. It is wild, uh, as Nita says. Too bad Florida didn't deny Tiana's adventure. Yeah, that would have been that would have been nice. But I will say the fallout from this, Lou. You now have people who were so dead set against DeSantis, the Sif Todd, wow. all these state regulators coming in and and doing all this. You now have people cheering some of that regulatory body um, on, which is I think is fascinating. What, <laughs> what, what's really funny? DeSantis. What's really funny is sure. among the ones cheering. Mm-hmm. Are the very, very extreme environmental people mm-hmm. who certainly are not DeSantis's voters in Florida. I know. Yeah, exactly. I, I mean, there are some Disney fans, a lot of Disney fans who are, you know, very anti DeSantis, anti state, so forth. Now they're like they're 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 very much uh, cheering these these these. Instances. Well, it's it, it's good for it's the so channel that I was I was not yet actively in the discussion on the previous show because I would have fallen down laughing, ver- you know, audibly when somebody in the chat said yeah what's he doing lately anyway i haven't heard much from desantis since he dropped out of the presidential race <laughs> and somebody else said uh running the state doing his job <laughs> yes. as governor oh, what they meant was yeah. because he was no longer a political topic they hadn't heard the people who hated him because he was a political person on right. the other side complaining about him lately because he wasn't doing anything that was relevant to their cause so oh so I mean, maybe I just being cynical but this just seems like the, the way business is done nowadays. I'm not saying that's good or bad. I'm just saying it is what it is. And either way, if you think this is going to stop them from tearing out the island and doing what they want to do, sadly, no, it's not. It may not. It may not. But I, I'll, I'll say this, though. If we can get maybe a change in what Disney's doing because of some of the stuff that they have to now fulfill because the state has requested, you know, that that's a win. And, and if nothing else, just having them do a double take on this 
you know, in which something like that just could never take place before. I don't know. Might be a well, win. Well, now I'll give you this. I'll give you this. Mm. Remember how when this was first brought up, everybody and all of us were saying, why the hell can't you put it on some of that empty land you've got? You said you got enough land for seven more theme parks or something or lands or whatever word you decide to use this week. Yeah. Why not do it there? Well, this might be the answer. Why not do it there? Because if you're starting from scratch, all of these hurdles are much bigger mm. and much more expensive, not to mention the physical cost of putting in the infrastructure. You know, everything they did at the beginning with the water table and right. putting in the, oh, yes. those power oh, and yeah. gas and water. And all. But in addition to that, taking totally virgin, even if it's, what was that word they used? Not preferred, not differential. Uh, marginally unsuitable. There you go. Marginally, Even if it's marginally unsuitable, it's got to take more jumping through environmental regulatory hoops than this does because it's mm. when and, you know there may be some grandfathering in clauses that'll help them with this too mm -hmm. far as well because we did it there once uh, we don't have to be quite so scrupulous when we do it again so i don't know but there's one answer as to why not put it in the empty land because it's more expensive and takes longer period that's a fair point on that's the other point. hand on the issue of taking longer it shows once again how delay is not a benefit because look at, look at, I mean, the classic example is Tron, right? They said, oh, there's a pandemic. Let's not build it quite so fast. And took six years to build a replica of something they built in China and thought it would be a benefit because, well, we're not spending the money. Yeah. And while you're not spending the money, the cost of every piece of material, every stick of wood tripled, quadrupled because of inflation during that period. So was that such a good business move rather than finishing it, even if it sat there unused because the park was still closed? I don't know. Somebody knows in the real vault Disney down there where the accountants live and they're not telling. So there you go. There you go. That was a highlight from our live stream on That Park Place Podcasts online, where the full stream can be found at the link in the description. But what about you? What do you think about this very intriguing and fascinating story? Please let us know in the comments below. Like this video if you did like this video. Share us out as it helps us out tremendously against the YouTube algorithm. And thank you so much for watching. T3, B.O. Please comment, like, and share this video, and don't forget to subscribe to That Park Place Podcasts Online, your source for exclusive content and highlights from WDW Pro, The Pro Show, and That Park Place for all the news that should be fun.